Hello, second grade. We are wrapping up our day today, our week this week, thinking more about our shapes and breaking those shapes up into equal parts, or what we call fractions. Can anyone all say fractions? Fractions, right? Fractions are equal parts of a whole. That equal part is really, really important, and you guys have been spending a lot of time this week thinking about making or dividing, partitioning these these shapes into equal parts. Now in second grade, we're focusing on our circles and our rectangles. So as we see those this week, um, those are the ones we're focusing on, circles and rectangles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our, our target for today. We're really being very specific in our work today. I can describe a whole by the number of equal parts. So Friends, that word describe means we're going to tell all about it, right? We're going to tell all about a whole, and we've got a lot of work with holes um, this week. So we've got our whole rectangle here. We have our whole rectangle in our divided into halves, and again with our thirds. And so we're going to be describing that whole by the number of equal parts that we have. Okay, so we talked about words last week, like earlier this week, like thirds, halves, and fourths, and we um, are going to be using those today to describe these holes, okay? So I'm going to show you some different shapes. I'm going to show you these different parts, and then we're going to use those parts and build holes from it. So I'm going to show you first this circle here, okay? I'm going to tape it up here, okay? What do you know about this little shape right here, or this part of the circle? That's right, it's one half, okay? We know from the other day that when we have a shape divided into two um, equal parts, we call that a half. So this is one half. What do we need to make this shape a whole? What do we need to make it a whole? Can you use your shapes from, pull out your shapes that we had from earlier this week that we've been cutting up, right? I put ours up on our charts, but you all have them in your folders or you have them at home in your little baggies. What, hold up the shape that we need or the part that we need to make this a whole. Seeing all parts of your circle come out. Yes. And friends, as we are, as I'm recording these up on our chart, I want you to be doing the same thing with yours, um, as, and we're going to be writing on them just like I am, okay? So we had one half, and what do we need to make that whole? We needed another half. We needed another half. This is one half. This is one half. We have one half. And one half equals one whole. Absolutely. So then how many halves make a whole? One and one makes two. So we have two halves, like our, plur our plural nouns, right? Equal one whole. One half and one half equal one whole or two halves equals one whole. So when we're describing this whole, it's made of two halves. Very good, very, very good. Now, I am, I want you to hold up two of your, I want you to hold up one of these and you to hold up one of these. Let me show you out there what we have. Mmm, we're still making that a whole what am I missing? What am I missing? Well, first of all, what is this piece? Oh, it is one. Yes, looks like that up there, doesn't it? Those are three equal parts, so this is one third. So if my friend here is holding up one third, what are we missing to make this a whole? How many thirds 
do we need to make that hole? Hold it up for me, friends. Yes, we need our third, third, don't we? One, two, and three. We need this extra one third to make that whole rectangle, right? Three thirds equals what? One whole. Nice work. So when we think about this shape, and we think about describing it by its parts, by its equal parts, we have three equal parts, and we know from the other day that those are thirds. And we need three thirds to make a whole, whether we're doing our rectangles or our circles. Hmm, very good. We know our three thirds makes a whole. We had two thirds and we needed one more to make a hole. I'm gonna pass out some and I want us to, I'm gonna pass out these cards to our friends and we're gonna see what is missing, okay? So each of them is gonna put one of these up on my board. Oh man, oh man, what are we gonna have? There's one of them. They tell me that this one needs to go here. Okay, hmm, where's this one gonna go? Oh, up here. Oh, I'm seeing some fingers or some thumbs up. I got some really excited friends for our learning today. What do we have in front of us? What's missing? We have three, we're missing one more. Three what? Oh, we have three fourths. Yes. So just like this, we have one fourth, and you had one fourth, and you had one fourth. What are we missing, friends? Hold up that missing part from your cuts from the other day. Yes, we're missing this fourth, fourth. Yes, absolutely. We're missing our last fourth. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. And how many fourths are making this whole? Write it in your journals, please, for me. How many fourths make a whole? Four fourths equal one whole. Absolutely, absolutely. So when we're describing these wholes, we're describing them using these parts. Two halves, three thirds, four fourths. Mm. So I'm going to put up two circles and I want you to finish those circles with what you have, okay? So I'm going to put up one of my circles and when you're putting up your circles, I want you to label them. Are they a half? Are they a third? Are they a fourth? And what is missing? So I'm going to put up a couple parts of my hole here, and you're gonna have to figure out what's missing. And I'm gonna put up a couple parts of my hole here, and I want you to think about what's missing. And then we're gonna talk about what we notice here in just a minute. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit so that you guys can have a conversation about it. Okay, so take a peek at these two circles that I started Hmm, what do you notice about them and what is missing? So you're gonna complete those circles at your seats and you're gonna have, or on your carpet spots, you're gonna have a chance to tell your partner what's missing and then share one takeaway, one noticing. I have 
we share that when we come back to the carpool? Okay, when we come back to the group. What's missing on the other one? Two of them are missing. Two what? Hmm, we'll have to share that when we come back. What do you notice about this one over here? It looks like another one on my board, doesn't it? We're going to have a chance to share that in just a little bit. If you are still needing time to share, please feel free to do that. Um, you can pause me at home if you'd like, but we're going to keep trucking in the classroom. Let's go ahead and share what's missing from our orange circle. Yes, we're missing one more, but one what? One third, okay? So we had one third here, one third here, and one third here. How did you know there was a third missing? Uh, so we've got that pie from, from another one. Okay, so we're using our public records to help us know what we're missing or what it looks like. A fourth would have been too small. A half would have been too big. Okay, so we're missing that third. And how many thirds make that whole? Three thirds equal that one whole. What about this one over here? I had a friend over here that was noticing. There's four that make this, so this is one fourth. This was one fourth, so what were we missing? We were missing two more fourths. I had a friend on this side over here, though, say something else that they noticed. It looked a little bit like another bracket or another circle that we had. What did you notice? This together looked like one half. So these two fourths made that one half. It sure does. Where else have we seen that? That's half, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so remember from the other day when we were looking at fourths, we were folding it in half first. So these two fourths equal that one half. But now, how many fourths equal one whole? We have to have our four fourths to describe that whole, four fourths to make that whole. Just like our, our rectangle, right? But this is a circle instead. As we put our, as we put parts together to make a whole, we want to make sure that we're describing those parts. Now, I noticed something interesting when I, especially when I look at our circles. What do you notice is happening as our, we have only two halves here, we have three thirds here, and we have four fourths here. What do you notice is happening with those parts as we have more of them? What do you notice is happening with those parts? They're getting a little bit smaller, aren't they? So this half, it's pretty big, isn't it? But then a thirds are a little bit smaller and the fourths are even smaller than that. Is that true with our rectangles too? Ooh, let's take a peek back at our halves way up here at the top from the other day. It's pretty big, right? But then, yeah, that's a little bit smaller. And that's even smaller. So that tr that's still true when we have our rectangles. So whether we're doing our rectangles or our circles, as we divide them or we partition them into smaller parts, we're noticing that those parts are getting smaller as we have more parts. We want to see if that continues to happen, if we notice that every time as we keep, as we continue to partition these shapes. Today, your work is going to be um, looking at different shapes and deciding what else do I need to, what else, what other part do I need to add to that in order to make that shape a whole. So let me show you what that's going to look like at your seats. You still have to decide. We're going to take our work and you're going to look at this piece right here. Okay, so on your own, you have half, 
you have to figure out what's shaded, okay? So there's, this shaded means colored in, and it's just like what we had, what we put up here. So when we think about this work, I had one half that I was showing, or that was shaded, and then one half that was not shaded. So when it says what's shaded, you're gonna tell me how many, okay? One half, two halves, one third, two third, three thirds, and you're going to record that. So you're gonna do the same thing with your thirds, and the same thing with your fourths, okay? So don't forget to look at that shaded or colored in spot. And then with each of those at the bottom, that last activity or that last question asks you to circle the one that has shaded that shows one hole. So we built those today, those holes, and I want you to look on here and decide which one is a hole shaded, which one is shaded hole, which one has the hole shaded down here in the fourths. So this is your work on your own. You're taking what we did together and you're gonna go and do this practice on your own. Remember that shaded just means colored in. So part of it's shaded and part of it's not. Okay, in your follow-up, you'll have a little bit more to do on the back and we will share that with you as you finish up on the front. Happy, happy fractioning, my friends. This is really fun stuff.